ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا وسيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له واشهد ان محمدا عبد الله ورسوله صلى الله عليه وعلى اله وصحبه وسلم تسليما كثيرا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن الا وانتم مسلمون يا ايها الناس اتقوا ربكم الذي خلقكم من نفس واحده وخلق منها زوجها وبث منهما رجالا كثيرا ونساء واتقوا الله واتقوا الله الذي تساءلون به والارحام ان الله كان عليكم رقيبا يا ايها الذين امنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم اعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم ومن يطع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوزا عظيما اما بعد always we begin with the praise of allah we send our prayers of peace upon our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. We testify with firmness and conviction that our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his worshipping slave and final messenger. We remind each other of taqwa Allah, and that is the unending pursuit of increasing our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all the while remaining conscious of that which is to cause us to fear him azza wa jal and measured with an unending hope in his eternal mercy, Jalla wa ala. It is with the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I find myself amongst our community here in the city of Toronto, in the Abu Huraira Islamic Center, Al-Amir. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala fill it with righteous souls, with pious intent, and with a conduct that is pleasing to him and in conformity to the sunnah of our Habib Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala who has gathered us from our different continents, me coming to you from Australia, you being here in North America, that the distance that is between us does not deter our hearts from finding love and contentment with each other. That if we don't get to meet each other once again in this worldly life, that we have an opportunity of celebrating each other's Iman in Jannatul Firdaus with our Nabi Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Ruya, and that word in the Mustalah of Hadith, it means that the narration has some weakness in it. From Amr ibn Shu'aib, from his father, from his grandfather who is Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al-As, that a Bedouin young man entered upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he came in complaint. He said, O Messenger of Allah, with aggression and without prior consent, my father took of my wealth without my permission or asking. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, ruwiya anhu, it's reported by Imam Ahmad, Imam Abu Dawood and others. And some of the ulama have claimed there's ittirab in the sanad. But all of the ulama of our sharia have used this hadith as an evidentiary purpose in the laws that we establish. That it's reported that he responded, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, anta, you, young man, wa maluka, and all of your estate li abik are of your father subhanallah i want you to understand this statement correctly the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is not saying to me as a father to take from my son whatever i want without permission the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is not saying to him 
young man, whatever your father takes, how he takes it, when he takes it, what he uses it for is his discretion and is none of your business. This is not the intent of Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But in it is an important statement for you and I to understand as we build a life in Canada or in Australia or anywhere we find ourselves. It is to build a psychology that we as men, and this is the khitab today to you and I as men, that we are men to live a life of serving other than ourselves. Subhanallah. We live in an era today, my dear brothers, where it is me, myself, and I always first. You see it in how people drive. I was astounded. I grew up in Toronto. Driving has changed. Nobody wants to wait. Nobody's willing to let you through. I'm first before the other. And even though there's people lined up, I'm going to cut in at the last occasion, whether it is seen or unseen as polite or not. You see it in the lineups, in people pressing the button in a hotel lobby for the elevator to close as they see you face to face with lots of room. Me, myself, and I. The Prophet ﷺ says to this young man, you and everything that belongs to you came from other than yourself. My life and your life, Ya Abdullah, as men, is meant to be sustaining for vast networks that are connected to us. As young men grow older, it is our job as fathers, older brothers, Imams, community leaders, to raise them with a psychology that your life is not just for you to live, but it is to be a benefactor to others to be sustained by it. Umar radiallahu anhu stood in the member of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. This is a riwayah that is also falsely attributed to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi It is the words of Umar, not the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Where he said, Allimu awladakum. Teach your children. And he begins by saying this famous statement Teach your children to swim, to ride horses, and the artistry of archery. Umar radiallahu anhu is not talking about swimming only literally, he's speaking about a psychology of preparing for the future. Who was Umar speaking to in Al Madina? Radiallahu anhu. He's not people, he's not speaking to people who live by the ocean, who have raging rivers near them. He's speaking to people and he's saying to them, Your children will see what you have not seen. They will live in a time that you have not lived. They need to be prepared to swim and not sink and drown in what is to come into the future. <laughs> Look at Umar saying to people who don't know how to swim. To teach others to swim. As you sit before me, my dear brother, I want you to understand that the Quranic construct of rujula, of masculinity, is a powerful construct for us as Muslims. There's a difference for us between dhakar wa rajul, a male and a man. A rajul, it always has ta'leel, it's always conditional to things happening, things being done. All of them are things that relate to service. Rijalun la tulhihim tijaratun wa la bay'un an dhikrillahi wa iqam salah True men are those who are not distracted by commerce and trade and business and work. It doesn't take them away from the necessary remembrance of Allah and the establishment of the prayers. Fi masajid in the houses of Allah, yurfa'u fiha ismu. The name of Allah is elevated above all other names. It's men who understand the term Allahu Akbar. Allah is greater. 
Allah is greater than my worry. Allah is greater than my past. Allah is greater than my illness. Allah is greater than my insignificance. Allah is greater than my fear. Allah is greater than the success I think I made for myself. But it is only given to me by the Mashia wa Masha Allah for myself and others. Look at the word. Men are those who are qa'im, fully standing, established for all of the women that are in their life. Did you know the hadith of the Prophet ﷺ? He prophesizes kama fi sahih that before the day of judgment, lil qayyum al wahid, for one man, he will have to remain attentive and ready to serve more than 50 women. Are you ready? Are you raising your son different than you raise your daughter? See, in our sharia, our sharia is clear. My daughter, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give her a long life. She's my firstborn. From the day she's born until the day she returns to the mercy of Allah, in our sharia, she has somebody qa'im established to look after her needs. Our Daughters, sisters, mothers, aunts, wives. It is in our deen that from the day they're born, they do not need to earn their keep. As a father, I look after her as best as I can. One day, inshallah, I will put my hand in the hand of a righteous man, bi-ibnillahi ta'ala. And I will ask him a question. Do you accept He's going to look me in the eye. I'm going to look him in the eye, inshallah. Ah. And he will say, Qabiltu. What do you accept? I accept to look after her as her father looked after her. To care for her and to spend upon her, to give nafaqa, to establish the law of right and wrong and halal and haram and ethics and morality and the, the sunnah of our Nabi Muhammad. Wala qadr Allah. If for any reason that this does not continue, she returns to her father or her uncle or her brother or her grandfather. Qa'im, standing tall. But your son must be raised different. Do you know in our deen? That from once a young man has balagha ashuddahu, has gained some strength, 17, 18 years old. My son Umar, mashallah, 15. In a few years, inshallah, in front of Allah Azza wa Jal, I am not responsible in our sharia for feeding him, clothing him, giving him a roof over his shoulder, while I am responsible for my daughter until the day she returns to Allah Azza wa Jal, even as a 70 year old. Why? Al-Rijal Qawwamun. Musa alayhi salam, there's this beautiful Latifa in Surah Taha. He stands in front of Allah Azza wa Jal, fi turi sayna. This is the first moment Musa is spoken to by Allah. And Allah says to him, وَمَا تِلْكَ بِيَمِينِكَ يَا مُوسَى Musa, what do you have in your right hand? Not just your hand, your right hand. I see you now. What's in your right hand? قَالَ هِيَ عَصَايَ أَتَوَكَّأُ عَلَيْهَا وَأَهُشُّ بِهَا عَلَى غَنَمِ وَلِيَ فِيهَا مَآرِبُ أُخْرَى He says, oh Allah, in my hand, I have my staff, my stick. أَتَوَكَّأُ عَلَيْهَا I lean on it. Subhanallah, the great Imams of Tafsir, they say, at it means three or four, many different functions. He, Musa is saying, I am responsible for my family. I'm responsible for my children. I must preserve my health. So when I climb in the mountains, I have a stick to lean on so I don't hurt myself because there are people who rely upon me. Number two, that when I'm sick, I lean on the stick, I go further than others would. My wife, my children need me. That if I'm injured, I go on. Al-Rijalu Qawwamun. And if I'm tired, I lean on it even though I may be asleep. That I maintain my work and my ethic so that others can rest comfortably. Subhanallah. What are you willing to give, ya akhi? 
See, sometimes we speak about love in emotional terms. We say, you know, I love my wife. I love my daughter, my sons. I love my father, my mother. Al-hubb kamal. It's to complete certain things. To complete your devotion, to complete the emotion, but it's to complete kamal al service. What are you willing to give? What are you willing to serve? And how are you willing to be prepared? Anta wa maluka li abik. It's not the Prophet saying to this young man, your father can take what he wants, but he's saying to him, think of what happened as you grew into your strength today and what you have to pass on to others tomorrow. I want to leave you in the first khutbah with a statement of our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Because the best of words are the words of Allah. The west, best of hadi, of guidance, is the guidance of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A man comes and asks the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He says, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, قُلْ لِي فِي الْإِسْلَامِ قَوْلًا لَا أَسْأَلُ عَنْهُ أَحَدًا بَعْدَكَ O Messenger of God, Say to me small, simple words about our Islam, our way of life of submission to God, that I don't need to ask and question others after you about it. Give me something that I can use in my life. So the Prophet ﷺ gives him two statements. قُلْ رَبِّي اللَّهِ ثُمَّ استقل. Say my road with Allah is service and ibadah of Allah, that I am with Allah. Say it, live it. Establish that the priority in your life is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. ثُمَّ استقم. Then whenever you deviate, come back to the straight. I want you to think of this word, istiqama, is not that you're always on the straight path, because that's an impossibility. It's impossible for your son, your daughter, your husband, your wife, to remain always with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Thumma staqim. Whenever you veer off, come back. This means that sometimes we have to look into the actions of the people who preceded us. You must be a father like Nuh was a father to a son who left faith. Subhanallah. Could you imagine? Nuh alayhi salam. Nuh alayhi salam. His son disbelieves in Allah. And until the very last moment of life, as Allah records in Surah Hud, وَنَادَ نُوحٌ ابْنَهُ يَا بُنَيَّ ارْكَبْ مَعْنَا Nuh, the rain is falling, the earth is fractured and water is rising. My son, you have another chance. The door is always open. Regret can bring you back to Allah. It doesn't matter how many steps away you have walked, one step and you return. The door remains open. Ya bunayyarkab ma'ana. Come back to the truth. Wala takum ma'al kafirin. Don't remain upon disbelief with those who disbelieve and recant. Even in the final moments, his son's heart is wicked. I don't need you. I don't need your God. سَآوِي إِلَى جَبَلٍ يَعْصِمُنِي مِنَ الْمَاءِ What good are you? I can climb a mountain and save myself. لَا عَاصِمَ الْيَوْمِ He doesn't give up. My son, I will try again with you. لَا عَاصِمَ الْيَوْمِ No one will help you. No one can protect you. إِلَّا مَنْ رَحِمْ Except the one who Allah's mercy descends upon. وَحَالَ بَيْنَهُمَ الْمَوْجِ The waves crash between them. وَكَانَ مِنَ الْمُغْرَقِينَ He saw his son drown. You and I must take on the example of Ibrahim with Ismail alayhi salam. Some of us were busy. Some of us, you know, subhanAllah, as men, we have the responsibility every day. We're out to work, nine to nine. Sometimes we have odd shifts. We wake up, our children are asleep. We come home and our children are asleep. Sometimes, subhanAllah, we are the father who's traveling back and forth. Ismail alayhi salam was raised upon righteousness, although his father Ibrahim did not live with him. 
but he remained alive in his heart, in his connection with his son. But I warn you, as Allah warns us in the Quran, Al-Malu wal Banun, Zinatul Hayat dunya that wealth, then children, beautify life. Why does Allah say mal and then children? Because many, may Allah forgive us, many, may Allah forgive us, put forward the pursuit of wealth before the pursuit of excellence with our families and children. Many of us, we compromise with our home and the time we spend, rather than the Living within means. Listen to the dua of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Allahumma kfina bi halalika an haramik. Oh Allah, make us sufficient with the halal, even if it's small, so that we don't look to the haram. In another way, the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam says, "Fi sahih, rubba qalilin, perhaps something small, wa kafa, and is enough for you. Khayrun is better. Mimma kathura wa alha." is better for you than something that's over in abundance, but distracts you from your responsibility with Allah. Rijalun la tulhihim. Men who are not distracted. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us and our homes and our families. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala return us to our deen raddan jamila. May Allah cause any fracture in our homes to be mended and healed. May Allah make the sunnah of our Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam more beloved to us than other pathways of life. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honor us with submission to him azza wa jal. May Allah make Islam a means of submission and peace in our life and in life with others. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect all of us who are here present and all of us who are absent. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heal within ourselves the sins of the past. And allow us to have a tawbah nasuh before our return to him. Hada wa sallu ala al-habibi Muhammad. Inna allaha wa malaikatahu yusalluna ala al-nabi. Ya ayyuha al-lazina amanu sallu alayhi wa sallimu taslima. Allahumma salli. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, hamd al-shakirin. والصلاة والسلام على سيد المرسلين سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم اللهم صل على محمد في الأولين والآخرين وصل وسلم وزد وبارك على سيدنا محمد في الملأ الأعلى يا أرحم الراحمين Of the greatest virtue of Allah سبحانه وتعالى upon the ummah of the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم is our conceptualization of redemption, how to fix mistakes. And within our tradition as Muslims, we have three important ways of looking at redeeming ourselves. And one of the worst things that we can do within our homes and with our communities and families is that a person believes that it doesn't matter what I do, nobody's going to forgive me, nobody's going to heal me, no one's going to give me another chance. I want you to imagine yourself today in the battle of Uhud. That you are one of the 70 people who the Prophet ﷺ looked you in the face, my dear brother. And he said that even if birds fall down from the sky and rip us off the ground, don't come off this mountain. You are the archers who are protecting our flank and our rear. Don't leave this Jabal al rumah and I want you to imagine that the Prophet says this to you, to your face. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. A messenger of Allah gives you an order. And then the battle begins. And Hamza's strength and Ali ibn Abi Talib and the Sahaba, they push forward against the aggressors who came from Quraysh. And you see the battle going out into the desert. The Muslims in your mind are again, inshaAllah, victorious like the battle of Badr. So the shaitan plays with you and says, al ghanima al ghanima look at all the money that's fallen. Look at all the horses that are saddleless. People are going to take it before me. I'm poor. These are the same people who stole my money in Mecca. I'm going to get what's mine. I'm going to chase. It's my right. So you begin to come down from the mountain. Subhanallah. 
Out of 70, only three remained. La ilaha illallah. And in that moment, Khalid ibn al-Walid, radiallahu anhu, who was not yet Muslim, circles around the mountain you were ordered to protect and attacks the Muslims from the rear. Your Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in front of you is knocked unconscious. His head is split open with a blow of a sword. His face is bloodied and pierced. His molar tooth is broken and is spat out. That the nurses, Nusayba radiallahu anha, Umm Amara, has to defend him by putting herself as a shield, injured multiple times by spears and arrows and slashes of swords. And it's your fault. You disobeyed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Imagine your shame in the dark as you climb up the mountain of Uhud to find protection with Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And under the mountain, the mushrikeen are barbecuing and celebrating and drunken. Desecrating the body of Hamza radiallahu anhu. And it's your fault. Imagine the shame of your sin as you sit in the dark when Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, all of the sahaba who've lost a brother, who've lost an uncle, they look towards you, the disobeyer of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then the wahy descends. Jibreel comes with the first verses of Quran. Subhanallah. Will I be condemned? Do I have hope? Will I ever be forgiven? What chance do I have? What right can I make? What is Allah going to say about me? And Allah begins ayah 134 of Surah Ali Imran. Subhanallah. Race each other to my forgiveness. Allahu Akbar. Me? The one who disobeyed Muhammad وسلم, I have hope. I can go to the forgiveness of Allah. And heaven that awaits greater than the earth and its heavens for me. Prepared for those who have taqwa. Who is it, Ya Who are they? Allah says in the verses. They are those who, when they commit a public atrocity, or they wrong themselves privately, they remember to come back to Allah. They ask Allah for forgiveness. Who can forgive but Allah? They don't go back to doing what they now know is wrong. Abdullah never close the door for anyone. Never feel you cannot be with Allah. For every one of us here in the masjid, we know 10 who are not. There are those who are in our life who have not come to Hayya ala salah. Your job and mission is to share a story to bring them back to Allah. To act like Nuh, come back. Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was the one who asks Allah for forgiveness and opens the door for redemption. This evening, inshallah, I have a series about sinners who are in Jannah. I hope you can join me with your families for this topic, about this theme, insha'Allah. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens our hearts to each other, allows us to forgive those who wronged us, makes it a means for us to find success in our dunya and akhirah. I pray that Allah strengthens us and strengthens Islam through us. 
I pray that Allah allows us to be conduits of good in our broader community here in Canada. That people see the good that we seek to do in pleasing Allah, that it's a benefit to them in society. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala establishes us upon a morality and ethics of our Nabi Muhammad sallallahu That Allah makes us of those who are upright in our behavior with our homes and our families. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala opens to all of us the doors of rizq. That if our rizq is trapped in the heavens, that it rains down upon us. That if it is beneath the earth and we don't know where to find it, that Allah brings it and extracts it for us. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shelters us from our sins and from the fadiha of others knowing our crimes before him. I pray that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us regular in our salah and our children and generations to come. That Allah honors our parents and our forefathers for the good that they have done. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect this masjid and its imam and its community. Allahumma ameen. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in good and not deprive us of righteousness. اللهم أعز الإسلام والمسلمين وأخذ الأعداء كأعداء الدين اللهم اهدنا واهدهم يا أرحم الراحمين اللهم أعنا على ذكرك وشكرك وحسن عبادتك اللهم صل على نبينا محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم في العالمين إنك عميد مجيد أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله العظيم لي ولكم قوموا لصلاتكم وأقم الصلاة